on second and goal. Stafford in trouble. Let's it go. It's a touchdown. There is a flag as Demarcus Robinson gets the score. Against his old club. He spent last season here in Baltimore. He's got the go-ahead touchdown late in the fourth quarter. How about Matthew Stafford? We saw him take that big hit on the throw to Puka Nakua, and then on that one, you know, just a great job of extending that and then finding Demarcus Robinson for the touchdown. Third touchdown pass of the day for Matthew Stafford. They're going to go for two here. That flag was picked up. And now you see the challenge flag fly out there. That's a good arm from John Harbaugh. It'd be interesting to see what he's challenging because all, all touchdowns, all scoring plays are reviewed. Baltimore challenging the ruling on the field of a touchdown. All right, Dean, uh, challenging the touchdown here. What do you think? Well, he can't challenge. The ruling on the field was a touchdown, so all right. scoring plays are automatically reviewed. So Coach Harbaugh can't throw the challenge flag. That's a charge timeout, and this challenge should not be allowed. It's interesting that it's gone this far where they said they're challenging. Now the officials are all coming together and certainly talking through exactly what you're saying. So let's see what he thinks that he's trying to challenge. And I mean, that looks like a good catch. And either way, based on what Dean is saying, it's already been looked at. It's a touchdown. He can't challenge it. And two-point conversion is going to come up at the Rams ahead, 28-23. By rule, after a score, all reviews are made from upstairs. The team cannot challenge by rule. We must charge a timeout. That's going to be Baltimore's first timeout of the second half. Which is no small thing either. Now trailing in this game late. And so Demarcus Robinson, who hardly played over the first two months with the Rams, has gotten it going a little bit lately. Had a big game against Cleveland last week. And he's got the go-ahead touchdown here. Now the Rams look to go for two to get it to a seven-point game. Play action. Tipped and incomplete. And so it stays 28-23. We welcome those of you that just watched New Orleans take down Carolina. We've got a great game going here in Baltimore. The Rams on the road trying to get a fourth consecutive victory. They've got a 28-23 lead with 441 to go. And this is that last touchdown. And it, just a great job by Matthew Stafford. Demarcus Robinson was on the outside. He's going to extend the play right there. Just a go. He sees Matthew Stafford breaking out to the right. Puts his foot in the ground and gets into his line of sight. Does great job finishing right there. And then after that, you know, John Harbaugh, I, I, I would think just out of frustration, you know, throws a challenge flag on a play that's already reviewed and can only be reviewed upstairs. And cost him a timeout. I think you make a great point, Joe. In a five-point game with 4.41 to go, I mean, that timeout could become critical for Baltimore down the stretch. Well, we've seen some vintage Matthew Stafford stuff today. Those changing the arm angles, standing in, taking hits, making throws, three touchdowns, and now the Ravens hoping to see some vintage Lamar Jackson. There have been flashes of it today. He's their leading rusher through the air, though, not as sharp. You've seen moments here in the second half where he wants to pick this offense up and just put it on his shoulders. They have struggled consistently throughout the game to establish the run, to get into a rhythm, throwing the football. Their biggest plays have been double moves on the outside. Isaiah Likely, Odell Beckham Jr. And then it's really been Lamar Jackson and what he's created with his athleticism. 
Empty set, four to choose from to the top of the screen here. On first and ten, Jackson pressured right away. Got rid of it, off the hands of Hill. It was off target. Bobby Brown, Aaron Donald both got in there in a hurry. Aaron Donald's been so close. Every, this is about the third time. There's Big 99 working against Kevin Zeitler, and, and he's right on to Lamar. And, and I tell you, that the one thing that Lamar has been really impressive with today, just that, that protection, that ball security in the pocket. Number of times he's had some hits on him. On second and ten, pocket collapses again, slings it outside arm, and this one's on target to Hill. And Justice Hill, who's having his best season, has a first down right here. That's a good quick decision right there by Lamar Jackson. He wanted to get a little bit deeper into the middle of the field, but had a nice outlet down to his running back. First touch today for Hill. Goes for a dozen. Inside four and a half to go. From 37. Deep drop. Good coverage. Jackson buying time. Still going, and Lamar Jackson tiptoes down the sideline. See where they spot him. Nine yards for Jackson. It, it's just amazing to watch the feel he has and to be able to extend the play. I mean, I don't know how the defensive backs for the Rams are, are being able to stay in phase with their man in those situations. And Jackson's able to escape the pocket, and not just get back to the line, but get nine yards. Second down and one. Look to throw it again. Underneath Flowers. First down Baltimore to midfield. Snap it quickly, throw it quickly, and Flowers again. Got back to his feet and got a first down. Now Witherspoon, it's like took for granted he's playing with the college rules there. And uh, Flowers said, uh-uh, I'm not at BC anymore. <laughs> that was amazing. There, there was not a sense of urgency at all from the Rams defenders to get to him and get him marked down. Inside the 40, Ravens on the move, down five. Jackson retreating, Jackson rolling. Lamar Jackson will toss it out of bounds. Pursued by a few different Rams right there, including the rookie Byron Young. The rookie Byron Young. And again, that coverage downfield not giving him anywhere to go with the ball. Yeah, it, it's it's impressive. And you know, obviously you're, you're moving one direction or the other to the right side of the field, the left side of the field. Your eyes might not be able to locate somebody, but just look at these Ram defenders. They kind of stay locked in and in phase. And it's very impressive. And, and I'm telling you right now, the one concern I would have, and I know you've got a rotation for your guys rushing, but how tired those guys up front could be. I'd come back in and hit them with some draws and some, some quick action right now in the run game. It's been all pass on this drive. Second and ten. Jackson looking to do it again. Got rid of it just in time and found Beckham. 14 yards and a first down. What a great job going down. 97 yards on four catches for OBJ. Jackson wants him in the end zone. Coverage from Darion Kendrick, an incomplete. Now just be careful now. I know it, it's Odell Beckham Jr. and you've got him in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but make sure that that defender, you can get it up over the top. If he's playing high in coverage and staying on top of the receiver, you can get that back shoulder throw. But we've seen earlier in the game when Lamar Jackson tried to get aggressive with a deep ball, and Akella Witherspoon made him pay. Jackson just a little bit over 50% today. Again, on a wet, rainy day. Making things happen with his legs, though. From the 25-yard line on second and 10. Steps up, lets it rip, finds Aguilar. Crossing the field for five. So 
So third down and five coming up. 244 left to go. Ravens tied with the Dolphins coming into the day for the top record in the AFC, starting a gauntlet of a schedule to finish. Isaiah likely up on the top. Number 80. Big body in the red zone. Jackson. Got a first down. It's Aguilar again. Boy, he's, uh, he's had a little burst where he's been the guy. Back-to-back -back catches. Two and a half to go. First down. We saw this at the end of the first half, too. The rhythm that this offense got into after they had struggled the majority of the first half in that two-minute situation. Inside the 15, Jackson making a change. A rear snap from under center. Yeah, so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> Down to the two-minute warning we go. Tied for the top seed in the AFC. The 11th play of the drive. It's Keaton Mitchell. And he's tripped up in the backfield. Christian Roseboom. Great job by Christian Roseboom. Watch this. He recognizes, you know, pre-snap, you had Keaton Mitchell outside. That's a great job with your eyes, understanding what the play could be. Timeout taken with a minute 52 by the Rams. And a second down and 11 coming up here. We've been talking about this as good of a season as the Ravens have had. Finishing games, close games, has been a problem. They're the worst team in the NFL over the final two minutes. A minus 27 point differential. Jackson's marching down to the 15 on second and 11. He scans. He's in trouble. He throws it forward as Young hits him. It's incomplete. And Byron Young gets home to Lamar Jackson for the sack. Rams are arguing that this is a fumble, and they've got a clear recovery. I think he gets yeah. rid of it. Knees, yeah, knees aren't down. The only on the field is that the quarterback was down by contact. It'll be third down. This re review will go upstairs inside two minutes, but I, I didn't think he was down by contact, and he was able to get rid of that. There was a throwing motion. Yeah. So third down and 11. Say that he's down. Dean, what do you think? Looking at this, this is a great look here. It looks like Lamar's knees are up, and it does appear his hand just comes forward with control. To me, this looks like just an incomplete forward pass. Now, the initial ruling is that he's down and that it's a sack. No fumble. But yeah, by that look at it, it looks like Levine's saying that it's an incomplete pass. It's probably the probably the most likely outcome is they take a look upstairs. And the other part of this, since they ruled him down, it, by rule, they can't make it a forward pass. You can make it a fumble with a clear recovery, but since the whistle and the ruling of down, you cannot make it a forward pass. All right, so set at third down and 11. Byron Young having a fantastic rookie season. Got home there, got to Jackson, which has been so hard to do today. They've gotten close, but that's the first sack. This is what the Rams are arguing, that this should be a fumble and then a clear recovery from John Johnson. But it did look like Jackson's hand was coming forward. So that's what they're continuing to take a look at. This is a long look at this. And it looks like about to get our verdict from Scott Novak. Fans getting restless. 
Already some tense moments here with the Ravens down five. And then Sean McVay's got to consider, do I keep doing what I've been doing, calling timeouts, trying to preserve time in case the Ravens do score? The ball's placed at the 21-yard line. Third down. The clock will wind on my whistle. All right. So... Again, the final call is that it is a sack. Final answer. And third down and 17 back at the 21-yard line. Empty set for Jackson. Deep drop. Time to throw. Let's it rip. He's got throws. Touchdown. Initial call is a touchdown. He saw the ball come out as he hit the ground. As it stands right now, the rookie's got the go-ahead score with a minute 16. There's possession. Two feet down. That's a catch. Position, the steps, and the football move. The score stands, and the Ravens take the lead. On third down and 17, Jackson to Flowers. And now they go for two, trying to get it to a three-point game. Jackson on the roll. Lamar Jackson finds Flowers again for two more. the touchdown on third and 17. Brandon Flowers is going to come from the outside. There he is coming in number four. You're going to clear out. Pause it right there. You pull that safety Johnny Johnson out of the way. It opens the window on that in route for Zay Flowers to find that spot. And then just a great job on the two point play. Just the athleticism. The suddenness out of his break and the speed to separate. Working against Jordan Fuller right there, but there's the pull. Nelson Aguilar pulling Johnny Johnson out of that hole that really opened it up for a much easier throw for Lamar Jackson. And now he's way on the outside, working up into that corner. Watch the suddenness out of this. Look at the separation he creates. And Jackson hit as he lets it go right there to Flowers. Guy that he told the Ravens he'd love to have in his offense. Been a fan of him for a long time before they were ever teammates. They're both Southern Florida guys, and he had watched his career develop at Boston College. Told the GM, Eric DaCosta, I want to play with that guy. If we get a chance to draft him, please do. He has, and Flowers has already set the rookie record for the Ravens. Biggest catch of his career right there to give him the lead with a minute 16. And Al Stafford and the Rams with one last shot. Matthew Stafford has more game-winning drives than any active quarterback. He's in the top 10 all time. Down the stretch, the hardest schedule of any team in the NFL. What a great boost this is going to be for them to kind of answer some of their critics about finishing close games. Stafford steps up. He's got Robinson, and Demarcus Robinson with Humphrey falling has a first down out near midfield. Gain of 19 to the 44. Wow, did they get lucky right here. Watch Demarcus Robinson. Marlon Humphrey's going to fall. If this is kind of a cleaner catch as he gets out and just can get up the field, if he can secure it quicker and get turned. Stafford launching. He's got Cup. Cooper Cup makes the grab into field goal range. It's 33 yards as Cup's putting together his best day of the year. Uh, just a little bit late. Marlon Humphrey going right back after him. He's got his eyes. He's directing traffic. And Cooper Cup runs it out and up. We saw the Ravens use double moves in the first half to get some key plays. And the Rams used one at a real critical time right there. And 43 seconds. 44. They had a second back there. One timeout. So plenty of time for the Rams. Remember, though, I mean, they obviously want a touchdown to take the lead, but then consider the kicker situation. Yeah. They really, really want a touchdown. Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty going on with Lucas Haversick. You right. bring in Mason Crosby this week. 
as a guy you're going to have in your back pocket in case you get into a situation like this. Playoff positioning on the line. Right. Let's get a veteran kicker who's been there, done that, made game-winning kicks. They make the decision to go with Lucas Havrasik today. He's got a 51-yarder this afternoon. 44 seconds and a timeout from the 22. Matthew Stafford looks to throw. He's got his rookie tight end, Davis Allen, and he's toppled after four yards by Geno Stone. Down to 30 seconds. When did they decide to use that last timeout? Habersek waiting for his chance. A lot of time running, down to 22. Stafford going in zone, double coverage! Humphrey had it pulled away by Robinson and incomplete. Incomplete. Humphrey had a shot at a game-ending pick. Robinson had a shot at a go-ahead touchdown. Instead, it's incomplete. Great job, Demarcus Robinson. Look at him work right here. Gets that arm inside. Never give up on the ball. Great job of a receiver becoming the defender in a critical situation. Boy, oh boy, that is a dangerous throw where a field goal gets you into overtime. Live to see another play. Third and six. And the play not coming in. They're going to have to use their last timeout. Third and final timeout, Los Angeles. To get the play call in. Timeout. That's a critical mistake because you you, 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 you're right on the cusp. We always talked about it when I was in Dallas. At 16 seconds, we felt like you could get the field goal PAT time or group on the field for that kick. Now you got to get everybody down at that end and have them ready to go. But now you don't have the middle of the field without any timeouts. So if it's caught in the field of play, depends on if you're beyond the fourth down, right? You can't clock it there. You got to get everybody out. This, this is that play right there. The use of that timeout changes a lot of the thought process for Sean McVay right here. You wonder if they have to look for the end zone here. Now the Ravens are going to take a timeout. timeout. Number two, Baltimore, 30 second timeout. Certainly changes the simplicity of it where you're just trying to pick up third and six and then you can use that timeout. Now there's that whole other factor. How do you pick up third and six and do you have enough time after you do? I don't think you do. Uh, Unless getting you everybody get out, out clocking the football, you know, if you if you convert for the first down, so just that that inability to get that play called, and it's a critical snap. You, you don't want to go to the line of scrimmage where everybody's not 100 percent on the same page to run a critical third and six play. This is a day where the Rams are trying to validate this run they're on, looking for their biggest win of this stretch. Third and six. In zone, incomplete. Millet the coverage on Robinson. And it will come down to the young kicker, Lucas Habrasik. Yeah, and that's really all you could do. There's Cooper Cup in motion. That creates the one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. You pull safety, help Daryl Worley inside, and, and you just take a shot and see if you can make a completion, if you can make a spectacular play out there and get the catch. Lucas Aversick wasn't sure he'd still have a job when this week got to Sunday. He's two for two, has to hit this to get it to OT. And he does. With one of the all-time greats, Mason Crosby, brought into the organization, you figure he was going to step right into the job. Haversick. One last breath on the job, three for three, and he's seven seconds away from having forced overtime. That's fantastic by Lu Lucas Haversick to be able to rise in that situation, all the doubt during the course of the week, and to get into a game on the road, and to be able to reestablish everybody's faith and trust in you. Great job. Great job, Lucas Haversick. Second tie we've had in this game to go along with the seven lead changes right off of the foot there for Rams fans It was like probably like oh boy. Oh boy looked like it was headed for the upright, but curls through there Yeah, the former Arizona kicker With a new life on the job here three for three today
As the Rams try to get their fourth consecutive win, you had Lamar Jackson take the Ravens down the field, a successful late drive to put him in front. Stafford answers with a drive of his own to even it up. So Jackson is seven seconds. Trying to make something happen here. You're just going to overtime. I'm going to overtime. Okay. I mean, you got this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Zay Flowers touchdown. Gave the Ravens the lead. It was short-lived as Matthew Stafford does what he's done so many times in his 15 NFL seasons. A late drive. Settle for the field goal, though. And this game goes to overtime. Now it's a game the Rams led for a lot of the first half. Ravens taking the lead late here. And then you put it all together and you got 31-31. The all-important coin toss coming up here. Stafford's team trying to get a fourth consecutive win. Coming into the day, they're one of four teams in the NFC with a 6-6 six and six record right there on the edge of the playoff picture. Ravens, meanwhile, as we've mentioned, tied with the Dolphins for the best record in the AFC, looking for the top seed. Not a day where, or in a season where it feels like it could be their year. The Chiefs may be vulnerable. Bengals okay, and the Bills, who knows if they'll even be in. Up to 10 minutes in length. Both teams will have an opportunity to possess the ball unless the team that gets a possession first scores a touchdown, or the defense on that possession has a score of their own of a safety or a touchdown. After 10 minutes, if the score is tied, the game will end in a tie. Two timeouts for each team, fourth quarter timing rules, no coaches' challenges, all stops are upstairs. Same coin, heads and a tails. Heads and a tails, your choice. Choice is heads. It is tails. You win the ball. This is Justice Hill to watch it sail over his head. And so Lamar Jackson led him in the go-ahead drive to finish off the fourth quarter. Has a chance to win the game with a touchdown right here. Yeah, I might come out and jump right back into two minutes. They look really good at the end of first half. Look really good at the end of regulation. They got into a really nice rhythm on that uh, that drive to, to, to score and go ahead. 31-28. Jackson's over 300 yards on the day. Three touchdowns, one pick. 54-19 in his time as a starter in the NFL. And trying to get his Ravens to 10-3 this year. Drive begins with a Keaton Mitchell run. Mitchell sheds the first man and keeps on turning for four. Akella Witherspoon able to finish him off. Not seen a ton of Mitchell today. You know, they're putting the ball in his hands, wondering if he can break it and end the game in one burst. Average is better than 10 yards per touch. Now credit that Rams defense. That was really good on that last play, the secondary support coming in to ensure that tackle. Both these teams have played one overtime game this season, actually both against the Colts. Rams won theirs. Ravens lost theirs. On second and six, Jackson looks to throw. First read taken away. Extends the play. Wants it all. Overthrown and incomplete. Wanted Beckham. Defended by Darion Kendrick. And it's third and six. Yeah, one of the things you get, you get Aaron Donald out on the edge. Trying to get him working against Morgan Moses. <laughs> They're sliding everybody out that way. Kevin Zeitler. <laughs> Uh, and the hardest thing is Lamar Jackson is one of the quarterbacks that he has not sacked during his amazing career and he's been close a couple of times today. It's just got to be so frustrating for him. He's like the only guy. You mentioned it earlier. He sacked 53 different quarterbacks. He just can't get to Lamar. Third down and six here. Pressure coming. Picked up. Jackson sideline and incomplete. And it's a three and out on the Ravens overtime drive. Wow. Boy, Darrell, we talk about this Rams defense, a young group getting better and better as this season has gone on. Now, they've given up 31 today, but how about this stand right here to open OT? That was fantastic. It, it made it look easy. Just one run play and then two really good defensive stands on those passes. 
Here's a punt to Trammell, who dropped one earlier. He drops one again, calmly picks it up, and gets drilled. Side of the 25-yard line by Trenton Simpson. Well, if you happen to just tune into this game, it's been a fun back-and-forth affair. And Matthew Stafford found Demarcus Robinson for the go-ahead touchdown late in the fourth quarter. Not late enough, though, because Lamar Jackson and the Ravens had time to take the lead, get the two-point conversion. And so after this breakup from Humphrey, the field goal from Haversick didn't win the game thanks to the two-point conversion. It got it into OT. And now the Rams can win it with a score. Kyron Williams got a seam. Kyron Williams got six. It's been another good day for the second year running back. Over 110 yards against his Ravens defense. It's just amazing what a difference he's made since he's gotten healthy and gotten back into that lineup. Just giving him that run game, that explosive component in the backfield. We talked about it earlier, but really his emergence has elevated this whole offense, this whole team. Second and four. Fake to Williams. Stafford sets up. Throws for Williams incomplete. And that is a scary throw as it goes by Williams. And a couple Ravens defenders waiting. So let's see what Sean McVay's got here for third and four. And he's got a couple of great ones that he's got. Out there on that field, whether you want to go Cooper Cup's direction. Puka Nakua's had a great day this afternoon. Puka Nakua goes up to the top, to the left. Cooper Cup's down to the bottom on the right. Ravens got everybody up along the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to three. They didn't get it off. It's a delay. A couple operational errors laid here. The timeout that they had to use to get the play called, and now a delay turns third and four into third and nine. Yeah, I, I just, I don't understand, you know, the situation where they had to use a timeout at the end of regulation, and that took away the middle of the field form with 16 seconds left. And I, I'm really not sure what they're doing on that play right there. I mean, you just made your third down much, much more difficult. On third and nine, Stafford throws underneath and dropped by Davis Allen. Both teams have to punt. And, and this is another one. I, I don't know if this play was communicated well at the line of scrimmage or in the huddle. The offensive line, you know, if you're going to let your defender go, if you're going to let Kyle Van Noy get right in Matthew Stafford's lap, you should at least have a screen. And I know that that was kind of like a tight end in the middle of the field, but you've got three offensive linemen coming back towards Matthew Stafford on that play. Ethan Evans, the punt. Ravens set to get good field position here. Tylen Wallace from the 25. Tylen Wallace breaks out of a tackle, takes it down the sideline. He stays in bounds. He stays on his feet. He takes it all the way and ends the game. There are no flags. Tylen Wallace is the backup punt returner. He's only in there because Devin Duvernay is hurt. He wins the game in overtime for the Ravens, who are now 10-3.
Just a great job getting north and south. He made one great cut, and then there was an opportunity on the sideline for a couple of Rams players to get him out of bounds. Once he cleared those two, there was really nobody else there. You'll see right as he gets inside on that move there. It's really your long snapper, Alex Ward, that had the best shot at him. And once he got by that, he had the whole sideline all the way down to the end zone. It's the second walk-off punt return touchdown in overtime this year. Remember the Jets week one against the Bills did it. And the Ravens do it right here. Tylen Wallace, who's an All-American receiver at Oklahoma State, hasn't done a whole lot since getting to the NFL in terms of receiving, but boy, play of his career right there. John Harbaugh's team keeps his excellent season rolling. 10-3 and three in overtime. We're back in a moment.